Here's how to create a modern faux wood finish using paint, glaze, and a rubber pet hair remover. Hi, creative friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have such a beautiful cedar chest makeover for you. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. Here's the cedar chest that I started with. It's a red cedar, solid wood. However, the outside has a veneer on it and it's not in the best of shape. It has so many scratches, dings, stains, watermarks, but the inside is in pristine condition. On a better look at bringing it home from the restore, it was even missing some veneer. Challenge on to bring this cedar chest back to life. Because I'll be selling it, and of course for safety reasons the very first thing I did was remove the lock latch from the inside these locks are usually very easy to remove all I did was unscrew the mechanism from the inside and it popped out really easily but then I was left with a large gaping hole to fix this up I used a dowel from a scrap piece of wood. I cut it down to size and then I glued it in place using some wood glue. As you can see, this dowel was an awesome fit, nice and snug, and I pushed it as flush as I could with the cedar chest. However, as you'll see later in the video, when I'm using the wood filler to fill in all the dings and scratches, etc., I also smoothed this out with a little bit of wood filler as well. To remove all the excess glue, a shop towel with a little bit of uh, water to dampen it works beautifully. Once the lock was removed, hole was repaired, now it was time to give this a really, really good cleaning. I used white lightning in my spray bottle and I find it really makes cleaning a lot easier. I just have, I just spray it on. I have my large sponge where I rinse off all the dirt in my sink and then I just go at it and keep keep wiping, wiping and spraying until there's no more dirt to be rinsed off. Then using a clean sponge, just with clean water, I make sure to remove all the residue. A quick and easy way to do this is to have two spray bottles, one with your cleaner in it, the other just with clean water. So then I can just go ahead and spray and wipe everything down with the clean water. Cleaning a piece is not the fun part of furniture makeover. <laughs> However, it makes such a huge difference. Uh, prep is key for a beautiful paint finish and for beautiful furniture. Never skip over the prep part. Once I was finished cleaning the entire outside, it was time to clean up and tidy up the inside. And as I mentioned, the inside of this cedar chest is in pristine condition like it was kept so nicely in fact the gentleman that loaded it into my car at the restore this was his piece <laughs> and yeah he was so pleased that I was taking it uh he said that he loved it he's had it for years but he recently moved and he didn't have room for it so lucky me once I had this piece perfectly clean and left it to dry 100%, it was time to bring it into my sanding room and give it a good scuff sanding. I used my Bosch Orbital Sander with a 120 grit on it. This sander is a workhorse. It, it has really done well by me and served me well. I also hook it up to my shop vac so no excess dust gets in my sanding room. I mean, not that my sanding room is a pretty place, <laughs> but the less cleaning I have to do, the better. Because this cedar chest is covered in a veneer, I can only sand the top and the body so much before it would sand through the veneer. So I had to be very careful just to give it a scuff sanding. And then all the scratches and dings and everything, especially on the top, would have to be repaired using a filler. To sand the legs properly and the bottom, I actually put the cedar chest on its back I like doing this when it comes to sanding and painting if the piece allows because then nothing gets missed.
I brought it back into my paint room. I used a tack cloth to remove all the dust from the scuff sanding, and now it was time to prime. Now, I like priming before I start filling all the dings and scratches, etc., and any imperfections. And the reason being is because once my primer goes on, I can see everything. And I can't tell you how many times that I would just not prime, go in and start filling. Then I prime, then there would still be a ton of little things left. Then I would have to fill, prime again. And it just took me an extra step actually. Whereas this way, when I prime, I see everything. I can go in and use the filler and it just saves me a step. Also when working with this primer, and this is a shellac based primer, any of you who have been with me for a while know that I often use this primer. I really like using the high density foam roller, which allows this primer to roll on smooth and beautifully. Now it was time to go in with a wood filler, which I use Dixie Belle Mud in brown. Um, it comes in white, black, and brown. Uh, it really didn't matter what color I chose to use on this because I knew it was going to get primed and painted regardless. Uh, but you can choose what color mud you want because it's also great for raised stenciling. Um, and in that case, the color does make a difference. I will also say that this uh, wood filler is very easy to sand, so it is perfect for shallow scratches um, and little nicks or crannies. If it's a large area that I need to repair, so deeper or uh, a really big gouge, I like using Bondo because then it, it it's not as easy to sand, but it is super, super tough. But for shallow imperfections like this, uh, this wood putty is fabulous. Now, the funny part about this was once I started filling in all the imperfections, uh, because at this stage, I thought I was going to paint the top uh, a solid color. So I really wanted it to be a very smooth, flawless looking top. But once I started using this filler to cover all the imperfections, there was so many of them <laughs> that I ended up covering the whole top. I might as well have just skimmed the entire top because this is what it looked like afterwards and this is definitely in its ugly stage. My sister actually came down uh, to, we were going grocery shopping. She came down into my paint room and she goes, oh, <gasps> Yeah, it was not looking good. As I mentioned in last week's video, you just kind of have to trust the process and keep at it. As I was waiting for the filler to dry all over this piece, I had a change of plan. I thought, okay, the top is not going to be a solid color. Uh, I'm going to do something with the front now because I was originally maybe going to gel stain the front to create a darker wood grain finish. But then I thought, nope, I'm, I'm just going to do this reverse. So what I did was I took a 220 sandpaper and started sanding, uh, scuff sanding the front of this piece while I was waiting for the wood filler to dry. I removed all the dust using my brush that I got from the dollar store. It's super handy and also a tack cloth. And then what I did was I created a 50-50 mix of endless shore and cobblestone and I put a base coat on the front of this piece, including the handles. I painted right over the handles and made sure to get into all those nooks and crannies as well. Then I had the great idea, or, or so I thought it was a great idea, to turn it into a wash. So maybe some of the original veneer wood grain would show through. So I took my spray bottle, I took a shop towel, and I started wiping it back. <laughs> this was a mess. I hated it. Now, being persistent like I am, after the first panel, I hated it. It was a big thumbs down, but I just kept on going. <laughs> I thought maybe there was some way that I could salvage this and make it look half decent with the wash. And thankfully, a few minutes in, I thought, no, this is just an ugly mess. So I went ahead and just started painting it full strength onto the front panels. 
As I was painting, I was really loving this neutral color. It is so beautiful. Again, I mixed cobblestone with endless shore. It was uh, approximately a 50-50 mix. One is the silk line, uh, all-in-one paint and primer. The other is a chalk mineral paint. Both are water-based paints. And quite honestly, when I was mixing the two colors, I was not paying attention that they were two separate paint lines. And then I thought, oh no, I hope this works out well. It worked out beautifully. Both of them are, like I said, water-based. Uh, one, the, the primer won't work uh, at all, if at all, or it certainly won't work at full strength if you're mixing it with something else, but I wasn't worried about that. Um, yeah, they, they just worked really well. It adhered beautifully. It laid on the furniture beautifully, painted on beautifully, and the color is just awesome. To get a good paint finish on the bottom of this piece, mm -hmm. I went ahead and laid it down on its back. Uh, I probably should have waited until it was a little more dry because this is not the easiest thing to do while the paint is still wet, but I managed just fine. And I have to say, I just love the base of this piece. It is such a modern looking, um, th the lines on it are just beautiful. That's why I fell in love with it at the ReStore. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it was selling for $70, which is a little more than I usually like to pay. But this piece is such a quality piece with such beautiful lines. I just, I had to have it. Once all my paint had dried, I brought the piece back into my sanding room and sanded down all that wood filler. Once it was sanded perfectly smooth, I brought it back into my paint room and removed all the dust using a tack cloth. And now it was time to lay another coat of primer on. Now for the fun part. Well, actually painting was, was fun, don't get me wrong, but now for the real fun part. Here's where the magic happens. Here's how I created the faux wood paint finish. I tipped this cedar chest on its side so I could start with the, the base of this piece. And I took a small one inch purdy paintbrush and applied a very thin coat of Van Dyke Brown glaze to the legs and the base. Then using the rubber pet hair remover, I added some modern faux wood lines into the glaze and then used my Big Daddy soft brush to blend everything out and soften the looks of the lines. I worked in small manageable sections. So the glaze has a long working time. You don't have to worry about it drying immediately whatsoever. But I do like working in small workable sections uh, just to make each section look authentic and look nice and blend into the next. As you can see, the pet hair remover doesn't fit into all the corners perfectly, but there's no need to worry because this doesn't have to be a perfect paint finish or glazed finish at all. It is very, very forgiving. And so long as you keep your um, the brush, the soft brush that you're using to feather things out, so long as you keep it dry, like as you can see, I keep rubbing it on that shop cloth. So the excess glaze goes on the cloth 
and not back onto the piece, then you can use it to feather things out and make everything look very blended. And keep in mind that the right brush for the right application is super helpful. So for the smaller areas like the legs and the little corners, I was using the one inch purdy brush. For the larger sections, I used this, I think it's a two and a half or three inch, uh, it's a purdy, it's an old, old brush that I just use for glazing and and uh, things of that sort. But yeah, it's just, if you have a larger area, make sure you get good coverage with a larger brush, smaller area, smaller brush. Common logic, but believe me, when I, when I was doing furniture for some time, I did not do that. <laughs> And it's it's just, I know it's such a small thing and it sounds so logical, but I was lazy and I didn't bother grabbing that other brush maybe because I didn't want to wash it or whatever. But now uh, that I've been doing furniture for so many years, it's well worth changing the brushes up for your for whatever you need them for. I worked my way around glazing this piece and adding this faux finish uh, just all the way around, swapping brushes uh, to the area that I needed them and just giving it a really, really nice modern look. This finish is, I'm kind of addicted. It is so fun to do. I also wanted to add, keep in mind that this is glaze. So if you go over it once and it doesn't turn out as you want it to look, there's no issue with you going over it another time. And if you keep going over it and you don't get the look you want, you can just take your brush and smooth it all out again and start from the very beginning. It is a very, very forgiving finish. And the best tips I can give for this finish is uh, apply a very thin coat of glaze onto your dried base coat. Uh, whatever tool you're using to make the grain, make sure that you wipe it off on a shop cloth each and every time you use it. And whatever tool you're using to soften up your, um, your wood grain, the same. Make sure you wipe it off on a shop cloth or, or a towel or whatever to remove any of that excess glaze and then go back in. Also, when working on the sides or working on one panel, um, as I mentioned in many other quick tips, to keep a clean edge, you want to come at that angle uh, on it. Uh, you want to come at that edge on an angle with your paintbrush. And then it, you don't want to go up and down. You want to angle it and then smooth it out afterwards, which will keep the other side or the other panel of your piece super clean, as I'm doing here. Now, if by chance you do go uh, over to the other panel or you, you, you don't want the edges to be too dark, so you want it all to look uniform. So if you notice there's an excess of product, just take a shop cloth or any sort of towel, dampen it with a little bit of water, and then just wipe it away for a nice clean edge. Another tip when doing these faux finishes leave the top until last. And the reason why I say that is because you've had all that practice on the sides and on the legs or on the front or whatever you're doing with your piece. You've had time to practice and per uh, perfect whatever finish you're doing. And the top is always the very first thing that people look at. So you want to make that as perfect and seamless as you can. happy with my faux wood finish and it was totally dry, it was time to flip the piece over and clean up the front panels, the front paint finish. And here's a quick tip on how to get perfectly straight lines when you're uh, butting up paint against a stain or another color of paint. You could just use a piece of paper and uh, place it right on the edge and with the tip of your paintbrush, just go in, dab it and smooth all that out. 
However, if you feel confident enough and your hand is fairly steady, you don't even need to use the paper. Utilize the tips of the brush as best you can and just work with that line. Take your time with it and you'll end up with a nice crisp edge. I have to admit, once I uh, finished painting the front panels and I uh, took a look at this piece, I am in love. I love this custom color and the way it plays off the faux wood finish. So I waited for everything to dry and then using my spray gun, I sprayed it with three coats of gator hide for a really nice, hard, durable finish. And that's how this cedar chest all came together. So here's the before. And here's the after. What do you think? I love it. I just love the way this all turned out. And I had so much fun doing this piece of furniture. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you got any value from this video, please uh, consider sharing it with somebody who might get some value of it as well. Give it a like, leave a comment down below because I always love hearing from you. You can also follow me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Until next time, have a fabulous week. Bye guys.